Hi everyone, welcome to the Inquisitive Reader. My name is Amy, and today we're going to be talking about picture books. Most books for children have illustrations in them. The obvious reason for this is that young children typically can't read yet, or they're not very fluent readers, so the words on the page aren't going to capture their attention the way an image would. But illustrations in really well done picture books do more than just echo the words on the page. They tell the story along with the text. Today, I want to introduce you to three types of children's books that have illustrations in them. Alphabets, chapbooks, and picture books. All of the examples I'll be sharing with you are available on Project Gutenberg for free, and I will put links to them in the description box below. Alphabet books introduce children to the letters of the alphabet by turning them into a story. The rhyme A Apple Pie introduces children to the letters of the alphabet by giving each letter a one-line story. This rhyme has been around for at least 400 years, but the edition I'm sharing with you today was illustrated by Kate Greenaway in 1886. The words of this rhyme are very minimalistic. B bit it does not give us a lot of information, but Greenaway's illustrations bring this simple three-word phrase to life. Alphabet books are very simple. The focus is all on the letters of the alphabet, and the text is very brief. The bulk of the responsibility for telling the story falls on the illustrations. On top of that, an alphabet might have some vocabulary that children aren't familiar with. It can be hard to find a word that goes with every letter of the alphabet that also relates to apple pie. But Greenaway does a good job at bringing even unfamiliar words to life with her illustrations. You'll also notice that Greenaway's illustrations are brightly colored. That's going to be very appealing for young children, the age group that would be reading an alphabet book. Chapbooks were very common in the 17th and 18th centuries. They were basically little pamphlets, so very short books. They could be on a wide range of topics. They could be fairy tales, short stories, uh, collections of poetry, or political pamphlets. This is an excerpt from the chapbook Tom Thumb, which is a fairy tale in poem form. A chapbook might have illustrations for the key events in the story, but they are typically monochromatic and aren't as visually appealing as the brightly colored illustrations in Greenaway's A Apple Pie, for instance. Chapbooks are probably more appropriate for slightly older students, the kind who would buy a modern chapter book today. Like modern chapter books, chapbooks are mostly text. The illustrations are just a supplement, but there are still more pictures in a chapbook than in your average novel for adults. Finally, in picture books, the image and the text tell the story together, and they are equally responsible for conveying the narrative to the reader. The important thing about picture books is that you can't really separate one element from the other. You can't separate the text from the illustrations. Every element of a picture book combines together to create a cohesive whole. This illustration is from the picture book Little Black Sambo. There is an illustration for every major event in this story, and the illustrations make the story come to life. The colors are very warm, which supports the tropical setting where the story takes place. They are also infused with light, which makes me think about the tropical sun that would have been an important part of the setting. All the illustrations are from Sambo's perspective. They focus on Sambo. Even when the really exciting action is taking place off page, the artist keeps the focus on the child. It's not just the illustrations that make this picture book come to life though. The way the text is laid out guides the reader. Picture books are generally meant to be read aloud, either by adults reading to young children or by children who are still learning to read. The way these words are laid out, kind of sloping downhill, changes the way you read them and it makes the story so much more entertaining. So let me sum up. In picture books, the illustrations tell the story just as much as the words, or sometimes, like in the case of alphabet books, even more. Illustrations use colors, shapes, and the perspective of the drawings to make the story come alive for the child. I'm really excited to look at my favorite picture books from when I was a child and see how the illustrations tell the story along with the text. But do you know what makes me even more excited? The idea that picture books can make children excited about reading. And that excitement is going to enrich their experiences throughout their entire lives. So that's it for today. What was your favorite picture book as a child? What type of picture books do you like to read with your children? Let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to connect with me more, feel free to subscribe to my channel or connect with me on my blog, inquisitivereader.com or on Facebook at The Inquisitive Reader. Until next time, be brave, be brilliant, and be you. You got this. See you next time.